As a young child, I remember riding a bus in the early 70s, and I remember being introduced to the church. I remember in the foyer, there was literally, I want to say hundreds, but as a little kid, it seemed like hundreds of kids back there in the uh, foyer. And I remember standing up in the back foyer, and I remember peeking through the auditorium, and the auditorium was still in the process of being built. I remember seeing wires coming down and and all that good stuff. And I remember, you know, still riding the bus. I remember sitting in, in class. A few may remember these names, but Mr. Yider's class. And uh, sitting in his class, I remember sitting in the front row. Mr. Hall's laughing, I think you remember him. And I remember sitting in his class. I was sitting on the left side of the class, and it was all boys, and he had a box in his hand. And when he opened up the box, it was consumed by fire. And he was telling us boys that if you don't get saved, you will burn in hell. And I remember thinking and looking at that fire. Now, I didn't know who God was, didn't know that you need Jesus to get saved, but all I knew, I understood what fire was, though. You know, my mom's a heavy smoker, smoker, and I remember her flicking the big, so I knew what fire was. And I knew that I did not want to go to hell. Next year, I was sitting in Mr. Confia's class, you know, again, talking about salvation and, you know, never got saved, but I still, in the back of my mind, I, I still remember fire. If I don't get saved, I'm going to burn in hell. Now, I didn't know how to get saved, but, you know, I seen people get baptized and I, I knew the script, I knew what they were saying. Every night before I went to bed, because I did not want to go to hell, I remember kneeling down by my bedside, and I would try to save myself. I would say, Jesus, forgive me, take me to heaven. And then I would go downstairs. Now, this is no lie. This is no lie. I would go downstairs into the bathroom, fill up the bathroom sink with water. I said, okay, Tony, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> And I would dunk my head in the water to baptize myself. Got done with that, and you know, didn't feel anything. Okay, man, I gotta get saved. Next night, before I went to bed, God, I gotta get saved. Lord, save me. I don't wanna go to hell when I die. I didn't know the script, I, I, I just knew I didn't wanna go to hell. <laughs> went downstairs again, went to the bathroom, filled up the sink, the bathroom sink. <laughs> God's my witness on this one. Filled up the sink. Tony, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I think about that, uh, not knowing that it was Jesus, you know, that you got to come to Jesus in order to be saved. Now, I was scared of hell. I was scared of hell. And not knowing that you have to come to Jesus. Now, in order to cure the fear of hell, it's, it's through Jesus. And about a few years later, we were in the bedroom. You know, there were six of us boys in the same bedroom. Todd was about four years, about, he was. He was four years older than I was, you know. But back in them days, you know, if he's a senior, you know, eighth grade, you know, so four years is, it doesn't seem like that now because he's 57, I'm 53. It doesn't seem like the age difference is huge now, but back then it was. And I remember him saying, Anthony, you got to get saved. I remember saying, Todd, I don't know how to pray. So I'm going to show you how. We're going to do this. And I remember him telling me about Jesus one on one. And I remember that night getting saved and asking Jesus Christ to forgive me. And that night, I knew that I was saved. I knew that I was saved. And no longer did I have to kneel down by my bedside or go downstairs to the bathroom and dunk myself. And when I got saved, I knew that I got saved. Come to church and got baptized up here by Dr. Barron's. And I thank God to this day that, that I am saved and on my way to heaven. Now, as a Christian, you know, growing up, you know, things come into your life. You know, you, 
you stray off the path, and I did, you know, uh, hiding from pastor along when the bus come, you know, because I didn't want to go to church. I remember them days and still growing up, you know, wanting to do my wanting to do my own thing, but being saved now, but the difference now being saved, you know, now you got the Holy Spirit living within you, and God said, you know, I'm going to get you, son. You're mine. And I remember being uh, in sin, uh, you know, wanting to do my own thing, and God kept hitting me. You got to get back. 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 And I thank God to this day that that Holy Spirit conviction got me back on track. And I remember this. It was raining outside, and I was playing a game. I was saved, and I knew I was going to heaven, but, you know, wanted to sow my wild oak still. And I remember, I said, God, I remember crying. This is no lie. I said, God, I'm done playing. I'm done playing with my Christianity. And it was as if that God had his arms open and me just falling right into his lap. And it's been great ever since. Met my wife, got married, and I thank God for my wife, you know, thank God for my kids. And, and now when I sit down with my kids, I said, listen, when you boys are looking for a wife, you look for somebody like your mother. And I thank God that my wife, she is every bit of a Proverbs 31 woman, every bit of a Proverbs 31. And I'm telling my kids, hey, when you're looking for one, you look for somebody like your wife. Only salvation can do this. And I thank God to this day because I work with people in Michigan City who is paying all kinds of child support. I mean, child support coming out the years. I, I'm thinking of a guy right now, and, I'm, and, and I tell, I'm praying for him. He has to work 50, 60, 70 hours just because his check is being garnished. And I thank God that he saved me because I know when I look at him, I very well could have been in his shoes. And I thank God that he saved me from that, even though that my heart and my flesh wanted that junk. And I'm glad that God saved me from that junk. And I'm glad that God kept me, kept me pure, <laughs> kept me pure through all this. And I'm trying to, you know, just teach my kids, hey, you know, when that flesh wants to run wild, hey, that's what the devil wants. Don't sell your soul out to Satan. Tell them, don't sell your virginity out to the devil because he wants it. And I thank God to this day. I got a beautiful wife, beautiful kid. Yeah, we're struggling. Yeah, I deal with uh, uh, rebellion. You know, I said, God, you got to help me. God, help me with this. And I thank God. Why? Because it was salvation that did it.